Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Tuesday night Bible study. Welcome, all of you. I trust you had a great day, and certainly I know that God was with you because we are with us tonight. So God bless you and all that uh, he continues to do in your life. I'd like to acknowledge all of our visitors that are sharing with us. Thank you again for uh, being a part of what the Lord is doing, and we appreciate your presence and uh, certainly thank you so very much for um, certainly uh, being a part of what the Lord is doing. Before we get started, just want to make a note that notes and outlines are available. If you can just go to our website, rcgministries.org, and there you can drop us a note just requesting. I like to have notes and outlines and give us certainly an email and we will mail them to you on a weekly basis or as you so desire. And while you're on our website, certainly you can um, ask or submit a prayer request. There's a prayer request notation uh, box there, right? Your prayer request there. And we would like to pray with you, along with you, for whatever your prayer concern is. So, having said that, we thank you once again for being a part of our Bible study. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for another night of study. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for carrying us through this day. We pray, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, that you will be with us. You will instruct us by your Holy Spirit. Nothing can be taught unless your Holy Spirit teaches us. It's not the instructor, it's the Holy Spirit. So, oh God, we pray that as I am a vessel, that as the words are um, uttered tonight, that the Holy Spirit will intervene and they would be lodged and take seed in the heart of the hearers tonight. That we can be greater servants for you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. We want to talk about tonight, um, are we on fire? Are we on fire? You know, back in the day, when I say back in the day, I mean the old church. When I grew up, persons were really on fire. When I mean on fire, they would run to the church. They would make sure they got there on time. It was a great sight to see persons running quickly into the sanctuary, into their positions, whether they were ushers or officers or singers, whatever they were assigned to do in the church, they came in with haste. They came in with an attitude. I've got to be there. This is my calling. This is a time of worship. This is what I'm supposed to do. They were literally on fire for the Lord. Now, I'm not speaking about any particular church, but a lot of churches today are not on fire. They come because it's protocol. They, be, they come because it's their duty. They come because it's their time to serve or to sing. And they come, but are they on fire? Like, I've got to sing. I've got to praise. I've got to serve. God's been too good. Are we on fire for God? Are we excited about God? So look, we want to look at the question tonight. Are we on fire for God? We become mundane. We become routine. There's a lot of apathy. If I get there, I get there. If I sing, I sing. If I don't serve... And this goes for all ministers, deacons, officers. It's, it's, it's all persons. And not just our organization, but many churches have this lackadaisical attitude. And seldom do we see somebody on fire coming into the house of God singing, coming in praising, coming in shouting. Are we on fire? Well, Let's look at Proverbs chapter 30, and the notes were sent out earlier today. Proverbs chapter 30, if you have your Bible, 
And begin at verse 15, because I do believe that Bible studies should refer to the Bible, Bible study. So, Proverbs 30, verse 15, and this is what it says. There are three things that are never satisfied. This is interesting. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 15. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not it's enough. There are four things that say it's not enough. Okay, first there's three things that's never satisfied, but then there's a fourth thing that says it's not enough. So you jump down to verse 16, the three things are the grave, it's never satisfied, people are still dying, a barren womb is never satisfied because it wants a, a child, the earth is not filled with water, so it's never satisfied because there's an abundance of water and it's raining all the time in a hurricane, so the earth doesn't seem to be satisfied with water. But the fourth thing is the fire that says it's enough. What that last part of that verse says, a fire never says it's enough. So, three things that are never satisfied, four things that never get enough. The grave is never satisfied, the barren womb is never satisfied, the ground that is not filled with water is not satisfied, but the big part of this verse is, and the fire that never says, I've had enough. Think about that. A fire never says, I've had enough. The more wood you put on the fire, the more it burns. You've seen buildings burn out of control. Because you would think at one time the fire would say, oh well, I burned enough and I'll just stop. Fires don't do that. Fires don't have enough. So they keep on burning. And if you put wood on the fire, the fire continues. Because the more wood you put on it, it continues to burn and it's not enough fire so we put more wood on it, and fire continues to burn. That's the key part of this lesson tonight. <clears throat> a sign that you and I, or a believer, <clears throat> is on fire. One of the signs is, as a believer, if we are on fire, is when we cannot get enough. We cannot get enough of God's word. We're on fire. We're never satisfied with where we are spiritually. We're never satisfied with what we have accomplished for the Lord. And I can speak right there a minute, a card. As I have come through life, I've had many times when I would reflect, Lord, I have not done enough. I should be able to do more. Because I am on fire for the Lord. And when you are on fire, you're not satisfied with what you are doing and where we are. One of the reasons why we started an international seminary is because I felt that there's more to do and I wasn't satisfied. This is me personally. I wasn't satisfied with what I was doing even though I felt I was in God's way, in God's plan and things are going fine. But inwardly, I felt that there was more 
to do for God than coming and going and singing and serving. I was not satisfied. So one of the signs of being on fire is not being satisfied with the status quo of what we are doing for the Lord. If we're on fire, we're not satisfied with the souls that we've led to Christ. If you've led two persons, three persons, four persons, you're on fire. You're not satisfied with the few that you have led. You put more wood on the fire and the fire continues to burn. You're not satisfied with the number of people that you have reached. Because when you're on fire, you're consuming. You're always trying to do more. You always want to do more. When you are not satisfied, or we're not satisfied with the scriptures we have memorized, I want to learn more. I want to memorize more. How about this one? When we're on fire, we're not satisfied with the seeds we have sown. We're not satisfied with the glory and the honor you bought. You brought to God. Have you ever, and I'm going to deviate a minute, have you ever brought a gift to the house of God in offering and even though you gave it you feel on the inside it's not enough see that's being on fire when what you do still doesn't satisfy you I need to do more a person that is on fire will never get upset at those who throw wood on their fire. Let me say it again. A person that's on fire never gets upset if somebody throws wood on their fire. In other words, why should I get upset if you are excited about God and you are doing things for God, you're throwing more wood on your fire so you could do more for God. And if I am on fire for God, I should not get upset if somebody else is on fire for the Lord. That, that, that's interesting right there. A person that's on fire will not be uncomfortable whenever somebody starts talking about being on fire. So in other words, I'm on fire, so why should I get upset if somebody else has a testimony about what the Lord has done because they're on fire for the Lord. If I'm on fire, I should not get upset because that person is on fire. Let me back down. Some people say, well, I'm saved, sanctified, delivered, hallelujah, praise the Lord, and nothing is wrong with that. But they see somebody else praying, praising, singing, and then we say, it doesn't take all of that. See, we're not on fire for the Lord. We're saved. But when we get to the place where we see somebody on fire, and we cannot rejoice with them, in other words, their rejoicing is bothering you, then maybe you or me or us, maybe we are not on fire. Because see, fire is contagious. If I'm on fire, and I see somebody else on fire, then I praise along with them. If I'm already singing and shouting, and I see you singing and shouting, my fire catch hold of their fire, and then we can just burn and just praise God together. That's kind of what happens in church. Somebody comes in with the fire, and they sing, say, preach, or whatever, and because their fire is going, it ignites the fire that we brought with us, and then we have great praise, and then we have great worship. But many times we don't have great praise, and we don't have great worship, because we come in with a real low flame. A real low flame. I'm just here, leave me alone. 
Yeah, you're saved. No joy, no peace, no praise. And somebody else is on fire. And you don't get with them. I don't mean jump over candlesticks. I don't mean that you have to, you know, go uh, do things out of your character, out of your personality. But if they're on fire, we ought to rejoice with them that rejoice. And don't sit like you're upset because they are praising God and you don't feel what they feel. If we are on fire, Lord, have mercy, Jesus, you will never tell someone else that's throwing wood. So I'm going to say it again. If you and I are on fire, we are not going to get upset when someone else is throwing wood on another person's fire. Let me put it this, another way. If I'm on fire and somebody else is on fire, praise the Lord, and another person joins in with that particular person. So that person is throwing fire on the person that's already burning. And if I'm on fire for the Lord, I'm not going to get upset because somebody else is encouraging somebody else. I'm not going to get to the point where I'm on fire. I should be excited that somebody else is on fire for the Lord and that person is throwing wood on the other person's fire that's already rejoiced. If I'm on fire, I want others to catch fire. So this thing about are we on fire? If we're on fire, we would not be guilty of avoiding people whose primary job is to throw wood on fire. In other words, if I'm on fire for the Lord, I'm not even going to be guilty. I'm not going to be guilty of avoiding people that throws water on somebody else's fire. If I'm on fire, I'm not going to feel bad or guilty because somebody is throwing water on somebody's fire. If I'm on fire, I'm not going to be guilty. If that person wants to throw water on somebody else's fire, I'm not guilty because I'm not throwing water on that person's fire. We need to think about this. Are we on fire for God? If we're on fire, we will not hang out with people. This is my last point. If you and I are on fire, we will not hang out with people that run down people that throw wood on fire. If I'm on fire, I'm not going to hang around with people that make it a practice of putting out or trying to put out somebody else's fire. In other words, I'm not going to hang out with people that because somebody else is blessed, they play down the blessing. Like it's no big deal. Instead of spawning the flame, praise him, thank God for what he's doing. I can't hang out with people that don't help somebody else, praise God, and throw wood on their fire. Not water, but wood. We need to throw wood on fires. We need to encourage persons that's on fire for God. So how do we do it? Five things real quick. First of all, we have to have a fervent spirit. A fervent spirit. The word fervent means passionate, a hot burning, a displaying passion, intensity, feeling, enthusiasm, fervent. So if we're going to be on fire, A or one, we have to have a fervent spirit. Acts 18.25 says, The man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and look, and being fervent in the Spirit, being fervent in the Spirit, he spake and taught 
diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. So Acts 18.25, we have to be fervent, passionate, a burning for the Spirit of God. Romans 12.1, I'm sorry, 12.11 says, not slowful in business, fervent in spirit. So that's two verses right there. Acts 18.25, Romans 12.11 talks about fervent. Fervent means passion, a burning, an enthusiasm. Fervent. You've got to have a fervent spirit. The key to being on fire is to have a fervent spirit. That means you're not a deadhead. That means you're not half asleep. That means you're not disinterested. You're not disengaged. You're not complacent and cold-hearted. If you're fervent in spirit, you're on the edge of your seat. Glory to God. You're at the edge of your seat, anticipating, excited, motivated, easily fired up on concerning spiritual things. So in order for us to be on fire, we have to have a fervent, dedicated, passionate spirit of God. Number two, in order to be on fire, we have to have a fervent mind. 2 Corinthians 7, 7 says, Not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, and this is it right here, your fervent mind, your passionate mind, toward me so that I rejoice the more. He was rejoicing because he had a fervent mind. Paul was thrilled with the church at Corinthians and their fervent mind toward him. Wow! This is great! Because see, it wasn't always the same way about them. You see, verse 3 says, you are in our hearts to die and live with you. So that second Corinthians, he's saying, you have a fervent heart toward me. Not so in second Corinthians. I'm sorry, not so in first Corinthians. Paul rebuked them and reproved them and corrected them and ashamed them in first Corinthians, the first letter. But the second letter, he mentioned how they had an earnest desire and a fervent mind. They had gotten it right and they were now on fire because they had a fervent mind. Whew. When you look down at verses 10 and 11 in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, it says, For godly sorrow... So we so worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Verse 11, for behold, this selfsame thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort, which carefulness it wrought you, yea, what cleaning, clearing of you, yea, what indignant, yea, what fear, yea, that what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, and it goes on to say, what revenge in all things you have approved yourself to be clear in this matter. He's saying in Second Corinthians, because you have a fervent mind, you are now clear of. And they did not get bitter. They did not accuse Paul of having a bare spirit or yelling at them in 
1 Corinthians, they didn't cut him off or throw him away in prison because of what he told them in 1 Corinthians. When you have a fervent mind, they got it right. They repented and they had a fervent mind toward God's servant. Why? Because they were on fire. One way to make sure that you are on fire. Always acknowledge the word of God and the vessel, be it pastor, deacon, teacher, acknowledge the word of God. Believe that the word of God speaks to us. And a fervent mind says, I'm going to listen to the word. Yep, it hurt me last week. It hurt me last year. That was in 1 Corinthians. But now I'm in 2 Corinthians. And Paul is thanking them for a passionate, dedicated mind, in this case, for the word of God and for the man of God. Are we on fire? For the word, do we have a fervent spirit? Do we have a fervent mind? But number three, got to go quick. And number three is we have to be a fervent worker, a passionate worker. Look at Titus 2.14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. A fervent worker. Zealous, the word zealous means having a zeal. You ever heard people say, oh, he has such a great zeal. He's so ambitious. He's so on fire. He's a ze This is a person that gets excited about doing something for God. That's a fervent worker. You're not doing it because somebody asks you to. You're doing it because you love God. A fervent worker gets a thrill when they ask to serve or work or labor or minister. I'm going to stop right here a minute. When a believer is on fire for the word, for God, for his presence, you say, Lord, show me, lead me. How should I serve? Where should I serve? I'm open to your leading. Have a fervent mind. Have a fervent spirit. When the opportunity comes to be a fervent worker, you should be or they should be excited about doing something for God. They should get a thrill when they are asked to serve to do something. Oh, yes. I was looking for something to do. I was hoping that I could do something for the Lord. And they give it 150%. They get there early and they stay late because they are a passionate worker. And we have such in our church and in other churches. They work hard. They work with joy. And they work with a great attitude. Ah, a great attitude because they're a fervent, passionate worker. They are zealous of good works, Titus 2.14. They are burning with zeal. These people don't burn out. They just burn. Now, you get tired, of course. You have to take a break. But you don't quit your assignment. You go on vacation, take a break, travel or whatever. But you don't put your fire out. People don't burn out spiritually. They just burn. Now, when I say don't burn out spiritually, it's different than being burnt out physically. You're not burnt out spiritually because the light of God is in us. It's on all the time. And even when you're laying down, you're resting, you're still thinking, you're still praying because we're not burnt out spiritually. To be burnt out spiritually says... I'm done with God. I'm through with him. I've had it. He doesn't come through. See, you're, you're denouncing the faith. But if we are zealous, if we are fervent worker, we get tired in the work, but we don't get tired 
of the work. A fervent worker takes a break, but they don't take a break from their spiritual assignment. That's when you know you are on fire for the Lord. They're not trying to see how to get out of work. They're trying to see what more can I do. You ever see a person like that? You see they're doing so much and then they take on another task. Now I'm not talking about overworking yourself physically. I'm talking about being on fire for the Lord. A fervent desire. We have such persons, singers, servants, deacons. They just serve and serve. And, serve, and that's a good sign because they're on fire for the Lord. They're on fire because they are zealous of good works. That's what Titus 2.14 says. Then, then, then number four is they're fervent in giving. They're on fire in their giving. We witnessed this a few weeks ago. We had a situation in the church where there was a need. We expressed the need, and just like that, the need was met. That's a great example of fervent giving passage of scripture they were excited about giving that's what 2 Corinthians 9 2 says their zeal in giving it provoked many we need to take a lesson from that we need to be fervent passionate in our giving not when we just don't feel like it but we need to be fervent faithful in our giving because we can't be on fire over here and not on fire over there. When a fire burns a house, it consumes the whole house. When we're on fire for God, it consumes our whole spirituality, not just a piece over here. So if you are fervent in working, fervent in spirit, and we're fervent also in mind, that's on fire. Spirit's on fire. Our giving ought to be on fire. That's number four. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 9, 2, because of their zeal to give, they provoked many other persons to give. But then this is the fifth one, and then there's one more. We have to be furtherance in our prayer life. We have to be passionate. If we're going to be on fire for God, James 5.16 says, Who is of you a servant of Christ? Salute of you. Always look, laboring fervently for you in prayer. Fervently in prayer. Fervently in prayer. James 5, 16 says, the effectual, we know this well, the effectual, fervent, passionate, enthusiastic, faithful, the effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. So we have to have a fervent prayer life. They will pray for others. We will pray continually, always laboring for you or others in your prayers. Show me somebody that has a fervent prayer life, and I'll show you somebody that's on fire. Show me somebody that has a fervent, passionate prayer life, and I'll show you somebody that's on fire. And I'm not talking about an outward display of I don't want to say emotions, an outward display of how they feel on the inside, how it's expressed outwardly. But you find me somebody who's fervent in prayer, and we'll show you somebody that's on fire. Sometimes being on fire is just sitting there saying, praise the Lord. Thank God for his goodness. Praise him. I feel good in my soul. See, you're on fire. But you're on fire in your own personality. Somebody else could be on fire and tiptoe across the pews or run around the church. But if you show me somebody 
that has a fervent prayer life, I guarantee you, they're on fire. And finally, number six, we have to have fervent love. We have to have fervent, passionate love. We have to have love one with another. First Peter 1.22 1 Peter 4 and 8 Above all things have fervent charity fervent love among yourselves for love shall cover a multitude of sins. So the question is are we on fire for God. Do we have a fervent love? Do we have a fervent prayer life? Do we or are we fervent, fervent in our giving? Are we a fervent worker? Are we or do we have a fervent mind? And do we have a fervent spirit? Well, I said fervent so much. F E R F E N T. And fervent, fervent means passionate, hot, burning, glowing, have a desire, displaying passionate, passion, intensity. Are we passionate? Are we on fire? for God. Well, if we're not on fire, we need to pray. And remember, being on fire is not an outward display. It's an internal flame. And it drives us to serve. Because I'm on fire for God. God bless you, people of God, tonight. Father God, we thank you tonight our lesson. Help us to catch on fire. Help us not to be satisfied with where we are. Help us not to be satisfied with what we have accomplished for you so far. Help us not to be satisfied for the souls that we're witness to or the people that we have reached or the number of scriptures or how much Bible we have learned. Help us not to be satisfied or complacent. But help us to throw more wood by your word. Throw more wood onto our flame so our fire can grow and the flame will grow so that we can be on fire for you in the name of Jesus. Bless us now. Thank you for talking to us tonight. Help us to be fervent in all that we do. Give us love, compassion, dedication. Give us a desire. Help us to be excited and help us to put more wood on our fire through the Holy Spirit so that we can catch fire, be more vibrant, and that fire will go to others. We pray right now. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, people of God. I'll see you on the conference call which starts in five minutes. And the conference call number for those that are joining with us is 667-770-1295. The passcode is 547-039. Please go to our website, rcgministries.org. All the information is there. Drop us a line for a prayer request. If you desire notes and outlines of the lesson, Put a note and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Let's catch on fire for God. In Jesus' name, amen.